Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. Based on this poll here, it sounds like people could use some info on the libs.versions.toml file, otherwise known as the version catalogs. So today's episode, we're gonna talk about that. A link to this doc will be in the description, and let's just go ahead and jump right in here. So first off, what is it? libs.versions.toml is a particular file that exists inside of your project. It is this catalog file, and it is just a you know, newer wave version of managing dependencies, and it actually can come in handy when we're managing dependencies across multi-module projects, which this application is. So we can really leverage some of that, uh, which is really, really nice, and otherwise, it just kind of comes with new versions of uh, uh, Android Studio projects right out of the box anyway, so it's probably worth noting what's going on. So I'm just gonna copy this here. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna create a libs.versions.toml file in a particular location inside of our app. High level here, we have our app module, we have our network module, we have Gradle here at like a sibling level. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, add a new file here. This will be the libs.versions.toml file. And in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste what we copied from the documentation. And basically this file has a, a particular way of reading the different things that we declare in these different regions. There's actually another one here that is not in the docs, but we are going to uh, leverage it as well. So we'll see here in our network module, which is the secondary like networking package, we have a couple of different plugins. We have most of those same plugins, except we have the application plugin here at the app level. This one has a library plugin. Uh, we have compile SDK, min SDK, a lot of this stuff just kind of hard coded into the app. Uh, and obviously when we kind of spread this out across multiple modules, we'd love to have one you know, single source of truth for some of that stuff. Looking at this network module here, we have uh, something that looks like this. I'm sure it's pretty common or you're pretty familiar with it, right? Where you kind of declare a particular version and then all of these different um, libraries that use that same version. We're using Ktor as our networking client for this application. So we're using the 2.3.6 version of all of these different libraries. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uplift this to the versions.toml uh, file, and then we can actually get all of this down to just one line of code. So jumping right into it here, if we hover over these little squiggly lines, we get this little option to replace uh, with new library catalog declaration, which is exactly what we wanna do. So we can go ahead and click that, and it'll actually start to change things in our uh, toml file. So what happens here is we declare that version that we have, that 2.3.6, inside of this little versions block, and then our libraries block, we have um, the Ktor client core, which if we take a look at this here, it, it kind of you know mimics that same uh, syntax, if you will, but there is basically a way to declare uh, a particular library, and then that library is comprised of a module and a version reference, and all of this kind of compiles down to exactly the same thing, right? So 2.3.6, which would be just kind of slapped in here, and then this ktor colon ktor client core is exactly what we had in this um, line of code beforehand. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it here quickly. If we want uh, to do it manually, I'm just gonna copy this one here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, duplicate this line. We will paste this value in here, and then we'll obviously need to change this. This will be the uh, OK HTTP. And this is kind of really it, right? And we're kind of seeing basically the exact same pattern where we have the 2.3.6 that's applied to this module and that's applied to this module as well, which is encapsulated in these different libraries. But let me just go ahead and clean up these other areas. All right, folks, after applying uh, you know, the same logic to all those other libraries we wanted to have, we ended up with something like this. And then our uh, build.gradle file looks something like this. We no longer need this implementation for the um, you know, name or the version, so we can just go ahead and sync Gradle after that, and then this, um, you know, issue will go away here with the libs.ktor not resolving kind of thing. Just want to talk about that really quickly while it is, uh, beta, Gradle is running. So uh, the way this kind of works here is we can uh, reference libs.ktor.client.core, and we do that by uh, or, or the reason that that is possible is because we have libraries here which gets resolved down to libs and then ktor we have a dash here but this can kind of just be uh, imagined as if they were periods here instead right so we have libs.ktor.client.core and that resolves down to this particular thing so that's kind of where the syntax is coming from uh, I would just follow this syntax. It outlines it in the documentation. You can change it if you want, but uh, the build system is kind of just set up to, to work with this. So I would just leave it like this, and it just follows a pretty standard uh, pattern here. 
Okay, so this is great. We've kind of uplifted this, the, you know, these implementation or these dependencies into the new version catalog. But the more interesting thing to think about here is why we have this, right? We have a specific variable for the KTOR version because we have a handful of libraries that we want to all exist at that version. Right? And we can see that here because we have you know five, six, however many of them down here listed. Um, the interesting thing here with the bundles is that we can actually create a KTOR bundle at this point, uh, which is comprised of all of the different libraries that we care for. And this gets declared exactly like this. So we have KTOR as a bundle equals this open brackets here, square brackets, and then we list out the actual names of the libraries here in a comma separated you know, array more or less. Right? The interesting thing here is we can go ahead and sync our files, but we've created now a bundle of our KTOR dependencies. So all five of these dependencies are declared here. They all work on the KTOR version of 2.3.6. So now this is a nice way to keep all of your relevant libraries bundled together. And the fun part about that is how all of these lines of code inside of here can actually just start to go away here. So we can actually say libs.bundles.ktor. And this is now just one implementation line from our perspective here in the Gradle file. But because of the way it's declared here, it's actually importing all of these different libraries that we have set to this 2.3.6. So it's a little nice way to just kind of, I hate to use the word bundle, but it's a nice newer version of how to actually kind of group your dependencies that are uh, related to one another and that you want to keep at the same version, right? Oftentimes you have certain things that are tied together. And so if you update one of the libraries, you're going to have to update all of them, or you're going to want to keep certain things in sync. This really just helps you do that in a little bit more modern way. And that's basically it as far as the, um, the, the, the bundles the versions, the libraries, the last little bit here that we can do is also the plugin side of thing, uh, but it's gonna look pretty familiar here. So let's just go ahead and start with our uh, plugins here. So let's go ahead and copy these over. This is gonna work pretty similar to how uh, these things are set up, the different libraries and such. So we're just gonna go ahead and have, uh, let's say this is the Android library plugin. And instead of module here, it's gonna be set to a particular ID. And then uh, similarly, there will be the version.ref, which this is going to be the AGP version, the Android Gradle plugin version. Uh, we have Android library here. We're also going to have the Android application plugin. Instead of com.android.library, it's going to be uh, application here. And this is a good example of where you're going to want your library and your application plugins to be exactly the same here, the Android Gradle plugin version. And if you don't recognize it, it's actually already happening here. This is the uh, project level build.gradle. We have the Android application uh, plugin here set to 832, and we also have the Android library set to 832 as well. So we're going to go ahead and copy this 8.3.2, and here we're going to say AGP version is going to equal our 8.3.2. Now these all resolve, these are ready to be used. What we're going to do here, instead of uh, the ID, we're going to have alias here, and this will be the libs.plugins. Uh, it's not going to resolve at the moment. What is it? Android library? Yep. Uh, Android.library because of um, because we haven't synced Gradle yet. But then also here at this level, we're going to have the uh, application one, just like that. Perfect. And then at our uh, project level build.gradle, we're gonna do something similar to this, except it's going to be uh, apply false like this. And let's just go ahead and duplicate that. And it's gonna be the application plugin. So that gets rid of this line here. And then the library one uh, gets rid of this line here. We can go ahead and sync now and hopefully everything can just resolve. And just like that, we see that everything looks like it works here. We're going to go away there with no more red, uh, no more red. Perfect. And now we have our plugin set up as well. I guess actually before I cut the video, there is one other thing that we can do because in our uh, app version, uh, sorry, our app uh, build.gradle, we do leverage the bomb here, the bill of materials for compose. So we might as well just cover how to do that. But if you made it this far in the video, slap that like button. 
Subscribe if you are brand new, I appreciate your support. All right, so it's gonna start pretty much exactly the same here where we're just gonna go ahead and, well, let's start here with this because this is our version um, number that we're kind of caring for. So we will go ahead and say compose bomb version. I think we're gonna also upgrade. I think there's a new one here. We'll, we'll solve that in a little bit, um, but uh, okay, so we have our version. We're gonna go ahead and take our module here and it's going to start basically exactly the same. So we're gonna go ahead and say uh, compose bomb. This is going to be a module that points to this guy and it's going to have a version reference associated with it, which we just uh, declared the compose bomb version. And here we go. We can get a newer version 2024.06. So we're also gonna do that. Perfect, now you learn how to upgrade a dependency if you didn't know it before. Now, taking a look at our, uh, the bomb, the bill of materials implementation, you'll notice all of these ones that leverage compose, right? They don't actually have a version associated with them because that's the whole concept of the bill of materials is that the you, you define the version of the bill of materials and then you import the different libraries that you care for uh, from that bill of materials. So the same thing is mimicked here inside of our uh, version catalog, what was this? This was the compose UI. So let's go ahead and just say compose UI. That's going to be a module that looks at this guy. And then that's it, right? We don't have the version.reference associated with it afterwards because uh, we only attach that to the bomb, not the individual libraries. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate a couple of these lines here because we had uh, UI dash graphic dash tooling preview and this one was the material three all right just went ahead and updated those as well to kind of just follow suit uh, and so now we have all of these things defined here we're going to go ahead and do exactly what we did before where we're going to create a compose bundle here as well and just like that we went ahead added our different uh, dependencies in here for our compose uh, bundle here, we're not going to be adding in the compose bomb to this bundle. Instead, that's just going to be leveraged here. So just like this, we have our platform here. We're going to have the libs, libs.compose.bomb. It's obviously not going to uh, resolve at this point because I haven't uh, synced Gradle yet. And then here, we're going to add in the libs. Dot, uh, sorry, bundles.compose. And then that will go ahead and pull in everything that we needed for the compose bundle that we declared. And after Gradle syncs here, everything resolves and we are all good. And that's uh, that, that, that's more or less it, folks. You know, I, I know I mentioned I'm just gonna go ahead and like change these over, but a lot of it with this tooltip is really just as simple as that. Uh, and it kind of just updates the different things that we need here, right? It just added this entire thing for us and then added in the coil version as well. If we sync, everything goes back to normal. Um, so everything here is basically the same, just a newer, fancier, nicer, more industry standard way of doing things. Uh, but this uh, bundles uh, document here, or this bundles like concept is I think a little bit better. Uh, I quite like that. You know, we could really do anything that we wanted here. We could have the min SDK or something like that set to whatever it is, 26. And now you can reference this inside of the different Gradle versions that we have here. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can get the libs.versions.min SDK. We need to call to int on that as well. Let's see if we just sync and everything resolves. Uh, but there are a couple different and there we go, I just forgot that we have to call dot get and then dot to int here on the, uh, when referencing it outside of like the dependencies block, but we can just go ahead and copy and paste this over to our other uh, min SDK that's here, right? And now everything is all in sync, we're all good. If at any point we, I guess that didn't resolve, Nope. If at any point we want to change the min SDK, now when we change this from 26 to 28, it's going to be applicable for all of our different Gradle files, the, um, the, the, the different modules that we have inside of the app. So with two modules, it's helpful. With one module, it's not really necessary in my opinion, but if you start getting up there in multi-module projects and the dozens of modules, you know this, this versions file is going to absolutely save your life in, in, in some ways and make it a lot easier to uh, manage your different dependencies. Let me know what you think. Thank you for sticking through this. Hopefully it was informative. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.